I'm looking fresh today. I don't know what it is, but I'm looking good. I'm gonna go grab my guitar. I'm gonna go. Okay, okay, now I now I have my guitar. Oh, oh, this? Oh, this? Oh, it's just the new Thick Rift Thursday merch. It's available right now on the Architect Tiger Studios website. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You know, it, I mean, like, I, I guess it's pretty cool. I guess it's, pre it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm done. I'm done. We're we're launching the uh, the first ever Thick Rift Thursday merch, and I'm so excited about it. If you're interested, head on over to architecttigerstudios.com. Under the shop tab will be the merch. Anyway, we got some pretty huge news uh, last week, and that is that Mike Portnoy is back in Dream Theater, and I, for one, am unbelievably stoked for that. I love Mike Mangini. Mike Mangini is an incredible musician, just like one of a kind. But I felt like the Mike Mangini albums that Dream Theater's released have felt kind of uninspired. The one I really did enjoy was the one before this last one. What was it called? Distance Over Time. That was a really good album. I, I really, really enjoyed that one actually. But still, it, it, it lacked a little bit of something that I feel Dream Theater hasn't had since Mike Portnoy left. So in celebration of this great news, I'm gonna start a little cover that I've always wanted to do. I did one a long, long time ago, um, back when I was still using the Line 6 Pod HD Pro, <laughs> back in like high school. I did a cover of The Mirror on an eight string, just in F sharp standard. And I mean, the, the riff is just like, it's all zeros, dude. It's so mean. <laughs> I've always wanted to hear this song on an A string. So we're going to do it today. We're not going to do like the whole song, obviously. I think we're just going to do like part of the intro. <laughs> By the way, this song is like, think about it. In 1994, there was nobody, nobody did this. There's a, there's a specific spot in this song after the first chorus where they just like do a halftime chug on the... I'll play just a tiny bit. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike on this. I mean, are you serious? 1994, not even, I don't even think Meshuggah was doing like that in 1994. I'm pretty sure Meshuggah was still in like six string standard tuning. I'll have to fact check that. <laughs> I'll have to go back and li listen to some 1994 Meshuggah. I'm not disrespecting Meshuggah at all right now, by the way. They're one of my favorite bands. Anyway, enough. I'm yapping a little bit here. I am yapping. So when I'm programming drums, I am going to listen to the actual record version. So I'm probably going to cut most of this out when I'm programming drums. Oh man, this is going to sound so sick with GGD. Let's go ahead and get the next part. Oh my God, that that bell. On that section is gonna go so hard. <laughs> that is so nasty. Oh, I'm having fun. All right, there we go. Drums for the section that I'm doing today are done. So we can go ahead and start getting guitar. So now for reference, I'm gonna turn a pitch shifter on for my reference track so I can go back and I can like figure out the keyboard parts and stuff. But right now it's all chugs, baby. It's all chugs. Let's go. That's crazy. This song, by the way, taught me metric modulation, like at a very young age. Or I heard this album for the first time, I think when I was like eight years old, I was going to my grandparents' house and my dad dropped me off and I had my CD player, my like portable Walkman CD player. But then when I got there, I was like, oh no, dad, I forgot my, I forgot my CDs. Like I had a whole, I had like a leather case, like a book of like CDs, like I had like 50 CDs in there. And then my dad was like, oh, sh man, uh, here, you know what? Let me give you one of mine. Opened up his like middle console in his car. And he was like, all right, let me look. Uh, here, take this one. And it was Awake by Dream Theater. And it changed my life. 
yeah, let's just get that much for right now. We can do the intro real quick too. Should I double track the intro? Or should it just be like one guitar? That was a good pick scrape. Doubled is kind of cool actually. It's gotta be really tight though. Let's do a quick edit on these. By the way, while I'm like doing a quick edit on these, this is completely unrelated, but is anybody playing the new Spider-Man game? I don't have a PS5, but I keep seeing streams on TikTok of people playing the new Spider-Man and I'm like, God damn it, that looks so good. I actually never finished the first Spider-Man game, but I would love to play like the remastered version. I got most of the way through the Spider-Man game. I remember I remember fighting, actually I don't know exactly how far I was, but I remember fighting Rhino and um, Scorpion. Anyway, yeah, super unrelated. I'm trying to edit guitars right now. So I'm doing this in a very un inefficient way. Let's see how that sounds. Dude, those are, those are just not synced up. These hits are just not synced up. You're probably like, Nick, just replay it. Get a better take. No. I might just, let me see if I can just copy this one. It's the, it's the chugs on that first one that don't sound good, but the pick scrape is really good. So maybe I can just take one of the other ones. There we go. Those, these pick scrapes pair really well together. That sounds pretty good. Edits aren't as clean as it could be, but sorry for now. By the way, I tempo mapped this beforehand and pretty sure they didn't play this to a click in the studio. So the, the, the tempo moves around a little bit. If I were to finish this cover, I don't know if I would keep it like this or not. It could be cool to like do some tempo drift stuff. Like music nowadays doesn't really have that. And it, it means that I do have to pretty much play all of it through. I can't just like copy and paste the same three chugs <laughs> over and over again. Okay, there we go, guitars are tracked. <laughs> yep, it's all chugs. Time to program bass. So now what I'm gonna have to do is highlight the first two notes of each three note grouping. So I can then hit shift L, force legato, and then, oh, I missed one. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's so obnoxiously heavy. Dude, and imagine hearing this in 1994. Like we're so used to hearing shit like this nowadays, but like imagine when this song came out, dude. Imagine when this album dropped. Can you imagine? I'm gonna, I, I should ask my dad what he thought the first time he heard this song. You know what, let me call him. Hello. Hey, I, I was just calling to, to ask you uh, a dream theater question. To ask me a what? A dream theater question? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm filming a I'm filming a video right now, and I wanted your thoughts on something. I'm um, I'm doing I'm doing a cover of the Mirror, but on an eight string. I was thinking about it in in you know like in 1994 when that came out, and it was played yeah. on a seven string. I was like, like there's nothing that sounds like that back then. Like right. nothing at all, like nothing like that heavy, like chugging yeah. on an eight uh, on a seven string. Yeah. I was like, I, I was wondering what like your reaction to hearing that for the first time was, if you even remember. Is that the one that goes? Yeah. 
And you, your question was what? What, what my thoughts were when the first time I heard it? Yeah, because like nothing like that had like been released. Like nobody had really even heard anything like that at the, in 1994. Right. Yeah, it caught my attention right away. Yeah. Whenever, and it's kind of funny because like whenever we would do a gig, and Mike would bring his seventh string for the Aussie two we used to do. We used to always uh, like goof off on that on uh, sound check or even live when we were playing <laughs> yeah but that sounds fun that you're doing that huh? all right i'll talk to you later i love you all right talk to you later all right anyway that was my dad anyway i don't even know where we were all right now we can copy and paste this one because it is because it's programmed and it will listen to the tempo. Okay, now that we've got all the chugs in there, let's try to do this keyboard part from memory. It's like a string sound. What can we use for this string sound? The thing about this song, at least I assume this string part was played on just like a keyboard patch and it kind of sounded a little fake. And that's part of what makes it kind of cool. Let's go like legacy logic stuff and see if there's anything cool in here. Like, yeah, yeah, like pop strings, like something like. I'm, I'm, okay, it's close. It's close. I, I'm by memory because I've heard this song so many times. I'm getting it. I feel like I have like 90% of it, but there are a couple notes in there that I'm not totally sure of. I know it now. Okay, okay, okay. Let me practice it one more time. I want to try to play it all with one hand. I want to. I want to challenge myself here. Oh, it's such a weird stretch. That is the closest I've gotten so far. All right, come on. I know this is MIDI and I know this is so easily like editable, but for my pride, I want to get this in one take perfectly <laughs> and then I'm going to quantize it anyway. <laughs> So close, damn it. No, I would, that was such a good take. You ever practice something for so long and then you start getting it and then you mess up the part after it, even though it's way easier than the part you just played, but you're just like so distracted by the part that you just got, <laughs> got the next part. <laughs> oh man. All right, you know what? I've accepted that that's the closest it's gonna get. <laughs> this is such a shit performance still. <laughs> like I practiced it for like 30 minutes and it still came out shit. Flare with some like more realistic sounding strings. BBC, the BBC orchestra one is good. Yeah, those shitty logic strings are good for just like the unrealistic side and like the consistency 
side, but then these BBC strings really fill it out a little more. You know what we should do to stay true to the, the original sound a little bit? Let's put a higher tuned snare in there. Let's put some reverb on it, dial in something on Pro R. The reverb is a little long, probably a gated reverb, thinking about the era that it was produced in. <laughs> that sounds sick, actually. Turn the release up so it's not. All right, here we go. The mirror in F sharp standard on an eight string guitar. This is obnoxious and I love it. That's so sick. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching that episode of Thick Riff Thursday. I just want to say that I've been loving watching all the submissions for the Thick Riff Thursday solo contest. It's been amazing watching you guys shred on that backing track. If you want to participate, make sure to enter by November 8th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time and download the backing track on architecttigerstudios.com and in the Instagram post, tag Apogee, tag Architect Tiger Studios and use the hashtag TRT 2023 solo contest. And definitely check out the new Thick Rift Thursday merch if you're interested. This is another one of the designs. Let me see if I can show you the back of it too. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty cool. It's a 2XL, so it's pretty big on me, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.